Yo, yo, welcome to lesson 27. As promised, today I'm going to show you a shortcut to lay out your websites. Instead of writing our own CSS grid, we can use a CSS framework like Bootstrap. So let's head on over to the docs page and here go to layout and then go to grid. So with Bootstrap, it provides a grid system. It's a powerful mobile first flexbox grid that allows us to build layouts of all shapes and sizes. And the key thing to note here is that it is a 12 column system. So basically with Bootstrap, we can have a maximum of 12 columns. Let's take a look at this example. If you look in the code here, they have a div, which is a container, which holds one row. And inside that row, we have three columns. And this basically creates this kind of layout. This looks super easy and straightforward. Let's copy this code to Replit. And let's paste it in our body and hit enter. And let's comment out the code from the previous lesson. And now let's click run. This doesn't look right. Let's see what's wrong with the code. Uh, so let's scroll up. So Bootstrap is commented out. So let's uncomment that. And now let's click run. Nice. So it looks like we have three columns now. One thing to note, in our style.css, we have a class called container. And in our index.html, we also have a class called container. So this one is from Bootstrap and it conflicts with our style.css. So let's comment out style.css so that we don't have any naming conflicts. And now let's click run. And now this looks a lot better. Now it actually looks like we have three columns. Let's add some colors to the column so that it's easy for us to see the separation. Instead of writing our own CSS, we can just take colors from Bootstrap. So let's go back to Bootstrap, head on over to utilities, click background and bootstrap basically provides us some basic colors. So all we have to do is copy the name of the class. So BG primary copy and go back to replit. And then for this column, add a space and then paste the name of the class. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we didn't have to write any CSS and now we have a blue column. Cool. So I added two more colors and now let's click run. And just like that, we can see the separation very clearly. And this is why we want to use frameworks. It makes coding a lot easier and we don't have to write as much CSS because most of it is already built for us. Awesome. Now let's recreate the layout from the previous lesson. All we have to do is create a container and add the respective rows and columns. Feel free to pause the video here and try it out yourself. And just to keep the video short, I will speed up the video as I build out this layout. Cool. So I just created three rows where the first row is the header. Then for the second row, I created two columns. And in the first column, I created two rows for the content one and content two. And for the second column is the side. And finally, our last row is basically the footer. And now let's move this content inside the layout. So I messed up a couple of times and that's why it's important to keep consistent spacing. So that way you can ensure that a column belongs inside a row and etc. But look at this, we're able to recreate the previous lessons layout simply by using Bootstrap. The only thing we have to do now is fix up the links so that they align horizontally. So let's go back to Bootstrap, click on flex. So let's copy D dash flex and go back to replit and let's get rid of list container and paste. So now we have D flex, let's click run. And just like that, we applied the flex property. So let's go back to Bootstrap. Let's scroll down and for the direction, it says that the default is row. So we don't really have to do anything here, but let's add flex dash row just to be more specific. And I'll paste that here and now let's click run again. So with this background color, it's very hard to see the links. So let's change the background color to something else. So let's put info and now let's click run. And here we can see the links better, but they look a bit crowded. So we can actually add some padding as well. So we can type gap dash three and all gap does is to add spacing between elements. Cool, and the only issue we have is the dot. We can just reuse the list item CSS. So let's go back to the top and let's uncomment our CSS. And now let's go back to our CSS file and let's comment out the container because that's our main conflict. And now let's click run. And let's remove the style for the header. And now let's click run again. And cool, just like that, it looks a lot better. Let's also clean up the CSS file to only contain the things we need. And all we really need is just this piece here to get rid of the dots in the list. Let's delete everything else. And now let's click run. And now that looks a lot better. Let's go back to index.html. So one last thing that we want to do is to center these links. So let's go back to Bootstrap and let's scroll down. And here we have justify content. And since we want to center everything in the middle, this is exactly what we want. So let's copy the third one, justify content center and go back and then let's paste it here. 
and now let's click run and boom everything is centered so let's copy this line and update the footer as well let's paste it here and now let's click run and now let's stretch the page and look at that our page looks great and we barely have to write any css Awesome, so one last thing before we end the video, we can also control how wide we want these columns to be. Like I mentioned earlier, the Bootstrap grid system has a total of 12 columns. So let's go back to Bootstrap, go back to layout and then grid, and let's scroll down. And if you read this section, it tells you that you can size your columns. So basically we can have a total of 12 columns and Bootstrap will handle sizing them so that way they have an equal width. But if we want a specific width for each column, we can specify that as well. So let's scroll down. And all we have to do here is specify column dash five. And basically here, we can specify how wide we want the column to be. For example, here they said column dash six. And basically by doing that, it made this column wider. And since we can have a total of 12 columns, and if you take six divided by 12, you will basically get one half. And basically this column is half the size of the container. So basically we could provide values from one to 12, where one is the smallest and 12 is basically the whole width of the container. So let's go back to Replit. And in here, as you can see, these two columns are equal width, but actually I want this red container to be a lot thinner compared to the one on the left. We can do this very simply. So all we have to do is go to this column. So this is the left column. All we have to do is specify how wide we want it to be. So in this case, let's put eight and now let's go to the red column. Let's put four because eight plus four equals 12. So that means this will take up the whole width of the whole container. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, they're not the same widths anymore where basically the first column is taking up eight out of 12 of the whole container. And now the red column only takes up four out of 12 of the container. Cool, and as we resize the page, the red column gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but on a smaller device, this might look very crowded. So what we can do is we can make this red column turn into a row, and this can be done very easily with Bootstrap. So if you go back to Bootstrap and let's scroll down, and here it says variable with content. So what we can do is we can set breakpoints to size the columns differently based on different screen widths. So all we have to do is do call dash breakpoint dash auto, or we could specify a width. So let's scroll up. And if you look at the grid options, this tells you the different breakpoints that you can have. If you remember in the previous lesson where we talked about responsive design, I showed you an example of using media queries to achieve the breakpoints. So by using Bootstrap, they already provide this out of the box. So basically, if the screen size is less than 768, it's basically considered small, and that can be considered for a mobile view. And we can also use medium, large, extra large, and XXL, depending on how we want to customize our page. But in most cases, you can get away by just setting two breakpoints, one for a small device and one for a large device. So let's scroll down. Cool, and if you look at this example, here they specify column dash six and also column dash MD dash four. And based on the comments, it's saying at the beginning, the columns start at 50% width. And when the screen hits the MD width, the columns will then take up 33.3% of the screen. And in our case, since we want the column to become a row, we basically just have to use the value 12 to get the column to fill up 100% of the width of the page. So let's go back to Replit. So first let's do column dash MD dash four. So that way when our screen is greater than equal to the medium size, our column takes up only four twelfth of the page. And now let's add a space. And now let's do column dash SM dash 12, which means on a smaller screen size, this column will take up the whole width of the page. And now scroll up and let's do the same for the first column. So now let's do column dash MD dash eight and then space, and then do column dash SM dash 12. And now let's click run and cool. Now everything looks normal. Cool, and now let's try resizing the page and pay close attention to what happens. And look at that. Once we hit the small breakpoint, this column basically took up the whole width of the container, so it became a row. And the same thing happened for the first column. And just like that, we created two different experiences without writing any complicated code. And that's the power of using a CSS framework. And of course, we should know a bit of CSS in the cases where we want to customize things a bit further. Make sure to read the docs and try this example out on your own. Anyways, I hope you learned something new this class. So make sure to smash that like button, leave a comment, and make sure to subscribe to this channel so that way you won't miss out on the next lesson.